A very warm welcome also from me to the uh, uh, AI supported uh, marketing with ChatGPT. It's great to see you after such a long time because I've been uh, um, coming here since this um, event has existed with Werk 2 and it is so great after COVID and is especially in particular to see so many familiar faces again. It's just great to be here. My name is uh, Alexander Wörl. I am one of the co-founders of ContentServe. Content Surf uh, is probably known for its PIM and DUM systems, has been around for over 20 years. I established it with uh, Patricia Kastner, a <laughs> nice anecdote. I actually gave or sold her a half the shares for one euro, or was it one D-mark? No, it was one euro to get her on board. This is how it all started. And, uh, and it, over the 20 years, I calculated it. Apart from software development, I also gave lots of uh, content demos. And I've gone through some 2,000 now. Every week I do two to three presentations, then this means that I've gone through uh, 2,000 demos. After the first 10 demos, I've, uh, it was so boring that I uh, continued to develop content serve um, here and there. This is what people said. Um, well, let's uh, talk about the topic. This is the marketing chart. Uh, most of it uh, will be live. Um, content is key. You all know this. Even the manufacturers and retailers in particular, uh, they are forced to get as many products to their marketplaces as quickly as possible today. And the strategy is clear. Long tail, non-stop shopping, everybody's invited uh, and should find everything. But this also produces a lot of work. Many products need to be onboarded. And if you've developed such a product, then it's not so bad because you've gone through one year of development. Then you can invest another day in the text. But when I have a thousand products uh, supplied by providers and I have 200 uh, upstream suppliers and produce the text for those, then it is all the more difficult. So content is key. And especially with data onboarding, this is an example as a metaphor, so to speak. This is what you get from a supplier. You get uh, a box of Lego bricks and all of the kids, um, or if you have kids and uh, um, you will know uh, you can't do anything with what the uh, supplier has delivered. When you look at the PIM, this is what it looks like. You have uh, little compartments and uh, filing cabinets and you have to sort the Lego bricks into those compartment so somebody has to sit down and uh, sort it out or tidy it up so this means every single brick needs to be touched in onboarding the big question is who does it is it you as the PIM owner or do you enable your supplier uh, to do this job, the onboarding, or do you use a cool tool or a cool software with a uh, um, properly integrated AI solution? And how far we can get with this today is what I want to show you live to do. How can I make AI today um, sort out and do my product onboarding. We've uh, thought about it for quite a while at Content Surf, but when Chet GPT came around the corner and I tried it out, I was aware now it's possible. Before Chet GPT, you had to develop models. I can still remember endless workshops and weeks of development work to map colors. The supplier uh, delivers colors and you have your own colors in the PIM and you now have to map them. To find an AI algorithm for this was uh, next to impossible back then. So you had to develop a model and then you had to train the model and uh, when I hear model and uh, training the model, um, uh, it makes me throw up. But with ChatGPT, all of a sudden a new platform had been created and I took a look at it um, and um, did one of those prompts. Um, the classic, I need a text, uh, you can see the inquiry, R write a short marketing text about a Lego pirate ship with the following features. 
And uh, ChatGPT really produces a text, and it's not bad at all. The Lego pirate ship is uh, Lego pirate ship, and Lego is actually uh, spelled in uh, uppercase. Uh, so the system is aware of registered trademarks. Uh, so this is this is smart. Then I wanted to know, should I uh, write a short marketing like a pirate would? Same metadata apart from that. And when you look at this, I don't know whether I pronounce it properly. Are you a true pirate looking worthy of your plundering? Well, <laughs> you have to come up with this. Even a pirate wouldn't come up with this um, immediately. It's not bad at all. And when you then think of the context, this is always the story of product experience. How does a nine-year-old kid see or experience this uh, web shop and goes to Lego and imagine yourself as the captain of your own ship? It's wonderful. And the same website with the same product, um, if this is written for the parents, then the parents uh, read a great way to keep your children entertained for hours. So this thing really thinks with you. And this is the solution to the question, who can actually create all of this context-related contact? Everybody wants contextual marketing. And with this, I can uh, actually generate this in uh, far less time. Uh, what about my path mapping? Next question. After these uh, works or workshops that we did internally for our own algorithm, I had it mapped. Mango, rose, sky blue. How does this fit our shop colors? Yet uh, yellow, uh, red, pink, green. Yes, rightly allocated. With Lego, you could fight whether this is orange or yellow, but it will probably be right. And the last question that was still open: How can I talk to a jet, a GPT, so that I can talk to it as a machine and actually can interpret the results as a machine? Because this is no longer a chat; this is human to human. I need something like machine to machine conversation but when you ask the right question you can get a machine answer I asked the same question but the uh, uh, um, answer um, was teasered um, this is a JSON array so I need an array, I need the keys, the values, and uh, curly brackets. And such an answer can also be processed when you're a machine. So this looked very promising. Now let's have a look um, how to uh, implement this with ContentSurf. The uh, status quo is my... Excel spreadsheet. This is what uh, suppliers uh, bring you. It's not about Lego, uh, it's about outdoor products, ponchos. Um, the uh, virtual company is called Snikey and it delivers this um, file. And uh, he registers or they register at a content serve portal. And what they see is very simple the catalogs the products uh, that uh, they have already imported, some messages they have uh, sent to the PIM owner, and above all the catalogs. So this is basically the atrium to the content serve PIM. So this is what he sees and gets. So he now draws up uh, such a catalog and gives it a name. Uh, I named it Outdoor Specials and uh, the supplier can select from templates, you know this from Amazon when you actually upload data, is it outdoor products or is it dogs, cats or mice? And as a next step um, with the wizard you can say either download, then you get the template here. And uh, I would have to import it somehow, so I need an article name, a name and brand. but. Um, as it usually is, it is there. I already have it. I mapped it. So again, no problem. So I say upload. And then we can have a look at it. Uh, we have to understand where the content is, where the header is. Uh, do not distribute, it says. And if I set it in this way, it's a good fit. Now the first uh, task uh, arrives.
and AI comes in and how does the do the columns of the spreadsheet fit um, the uh, columns of my onboarding template and the mapping chat GPT has made a proposal here item number of article number okay great item uh, description of article name model designation I can see here's the Valdepino Pancho that's right so as a human I can see this The brand, I know that we don't have this um, uh, the, the cheating, was ch mapped to cheating. The color designation was actually color, uh, mapped to color, grade and market area. I have to submit a text there. So I take the description because I know that I can enter this in the short text description. Then the features, he actually got these from the material composition, the keywords from the product category. Yeah, okay. Then I go with the subcategory of category as a human, the image of product image, um, super, great. Apply mapping. And now the data is basically scooped over to uh, the model that we need. And then the next step is refine data. Everything shown or displayed in green is there. Uh, a thousand lines, beautiful script and it's loading endlessly so to speak everything that's green fits for the brand uh, this is my uh, file so i could uh, enter nike by hand but if you've actually copied uh, a thousand lines in a spreadsheet you know this is really tiring this is why you've got the fill down so for a thousand lines the short text is super but I still have this great in here. This is like an enumeration. And as a human, <coughs> I can actually search and replace with my right um, mouse click, spacing, comma, spacing, all values. So I've embellished it here. There's no German text, but uh, only the, the boxes with stars are required. This is fine. This brings me to the problem of colors. I said this is red, mango, and blue. And it's now red. Why? Because uh, this is the content serve value range. Later during import, this turns into a value. But it does uh, not have a lowercase red, only an uppercase red. Okay, mango. You, do you know what mango is now? Yellow. Yeah, it's yellow and so on and so forth. So actually, uh, what I would have to do is I would have to map the colors for a thousand lines and this is exactly the situation uh, that we had before. So a thousand Lego bricks uh, would have to be taken um, and asked, are you a cat, a dog or a mouse? And here through consolidate values, uh, I can use chat GPT again um, you see the open AI and uh, it comes with a proposal black of black black metal of black and the the surprise they have fantastic colors that you don't have in your web store uh, ocean of blue water of brown um, super a mango of yellow apply mapping and I've saved an afternoon's work and have briefly mapped uh, a thousand colors next problem I now have to clean up and sort each brick into a box. So I have uh, to sort the product uh, in the right place in PIM. But I don't want to allow people to access my PIM tree because they wouldn't understand it. And this is why by drop down we can make a reference to the PIM tree uh, and only to the auto because it's an auto product. Again, same problem poncho will go to clothing poncho. But again, we've got a thousand lines. Not nice but instead you press consolidate values and then you actually use chat GPT again and a proposal is uh, submitted a thousand different categories mapped to my PIM tree trousers of clothing pants pullover to sweater t-shirt to she-shirt and my poncho to clothing poncho. Great, isn't it? And I guess I, I again say apply mapping and I saved another afternoon's uh, work. Well, 
long text is not available, so forget about it. The admin will do that later. For the keywords, uh, I can include camping and climbing and cycling maybe. Again, with fill down, I've done this. Let's uh, look at the images now. The images uh, are either uh, uploaded with Upload Media or you get a URL by the supplier. So in the Excel spreadsheet, the supplier actually includes a link to an image. This has to be introduced uh, and linked with the dam and the PIM. But you can look at the preview and it looks great. But all of a sudden, uh, I can see that some are not so great because um, uh, 2000 pixels for humans, this is too much. So they were denied by the data quality management. Some are even broken. This one, for instance, this image seems to look fine at first, but in actual fact, it's not found. So you have quite a good view of uh, which data work and which don't. At the end, the supplier can actually look at the summary, uh, what the data looks like, and can then leave a message maybe, for instance, um, there is a communication with a PIM owner, uh, how can I upload images here? Uh, assigned to the PIM and then actually reconcile these. But apart from that, the system is happy, ready for import. It can't do more at this point because the supplier is not allowed to touch your PIM. But what the supplier can do is upload further images. Maybe he has other images. I've uh, um, uh, selected some generic marketing images that are probably uploaded to the dashboard as well. They analyze these images. You can see um, that metadata could also be sent, but this is a classic for AI vision. Um, let's, uh, l let's look at the metadata, sky, mountain, blue, slope. Uh, this is all already tagged. Great. Um, well then, so much for that. Let's now look at the uh, process from the other side, so to speak. As a PIM owner, I now enter the uh, big PIM world and there are many new possibilities. I can see the products, I can see the images, the workflows and so on and so forth, but I also see the onboarding area. And in the onboarding area, I not only see the one supplier, but all suppliers. And I even have further opportunities to access the catalogs, um, to actually create column sets or the uh, templates uh, um, to look at and actually contact suppliers. And what strikes me here is that Nike and this uh, orange state has uh, submitted a new Excel spreadsheet. Let's look at the data. Great. So I'm supposed to importment, but there's no German text submitted with it. So what I could do is uh, actually uh, write a text based on the English text, which is a good idea. So I click on the right mouse uh, click, uh, column uh, short text. So I've copied this column and now I would have to uh, translate it. I can this I can do this with content uh, serve TX, but I can also say translate to German with the right mouse click. This is a deeper integration and uh, all of a sudden I've got my German text. So Depot again as an AI support. The uh, last exciting topic I want to touch upon, how do I get my long text now? I have a short text, I have uh, plenty of metadata. Uh, I could start writing if I wanted to, but uh, I am in the situation now that uh, I can use some technical tools. Right mouse click, create, create, create AI text. And now the, the question that I showed you uh, on the PowerPoint as an HTML form. Create an adventurous long text for a product in HTML format. Uh, 
less than a thousand characters at f um, five bullet points in English with the features. And then I copy the columns, uh, I uh, delete them, the article number is not needed, the product name could be helpful, the brand, the short text, the color, the features, the weight, maybe I include the marketing area. Super! Well, go for it! And now we see the processing. ChatGPT now actually uh, creates the text and I get the marketing texts um, uh, delivered piece by piece. And this is an HTML markup now. My standard text with bullet points, uh, five we, we ordered. And um, the system created it. Brutally good. Okay, uh, so far I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And I import all of this now, then look at it in the merge preview. This is a view that I only have a p as a PIM owner, which products are new. This is the blue ones, which do already exist. Some are there, but they were changed. This says new, that is interesting. So I will include a new text so that I can follow up on this. So Poncho, P Valdipino Poncho, small change, and I save it. And then I enter this into my PIM system. All of this works through the classic uh, content serve data flow. Other story, uh, other lecture. But now the data has arrived in PIM, and PIM means uh, I have my content serve PIM, I can see products for approval, and I've got the data, and I have a look at it. This is the PIM tree now. And now you can see from that from the flat uh, supplier spreadsheet of the uh, single items, the data flow has created uh, the Valdepino Poncho Red uh, interim level and the Valdepino Poncho, this is the product level. This was all sorted into the poncho segment. This was also our question, where would you sort it? So the bricks in inverted commas were sorted properly and even into smart uh, small boxes and all of the information is there. And my text here, uh, which I entered in the grid manually, is also available. I could uh, uh, use the content serif uh, workflow to start enriching this. I don't know whether you've seen this before. This is the flow. I received something from the supplier. And what I do, I, I have to reconcile with the ERP to sell the product. Do I have to review the text? Do I have to review the images? Do I have to translate things? So these are questions uh, um, that uh, are a given for the Kent content uh, serve uh, workflow. Okay, let's look at the publication of the product data now. First step, we probably want to transfer it to a web shop. And there are the various trees with content serve available. This is the real tree with the product master data. So the Valdepino Poncho Red S is included, but at the bottom you will also see the channel views. And there I have the products that I can enter via drag and drop. And I can simply publish them, right plows, click, update channel, and then um, these are transferred or handed over to a connector. This is the SIBS connector uh, for Magento shop, and we will have a look at this a little later. But I've served one channel already, but let's look at a different channel now. We are, where are we? Well, at the print day, Werk 2 in design. So I connect with this project specifically. So you've got uh, the uh, content serve SARS cloud here, the same URL here. And I register with the same user and say, OK. So this is a live connection from the InDesign client to this potential uh, SARS client. 
and on my laptop uh, I'm in Mülheim and the Ruhr and I can see the cloud that is being um, operated in Munich no problem so I have the publication range available and I have a document maybe with uh, what a print um, outdoor outdoor I prepared a template for this so I have my paragraph styles in there. I can see the product pool. And the product pool looks at my PIM tree, the clothing poncho, Valdepino poncho, red S. So this is uh, precisely the products that, that I've just imported can be used. And uh, I place this area here with a uh, quarter of a page template and uh, then they basically fly in immediately. A big advantage of the uh, uh, com uh, content serve commit integration is that these uh, things work live. So there are no subscribe or export or re-import uh, steps. I can directly access the PIM system. Okay, so this was the InDesign part. But uh, I uh, don't dwell on this. I simply commit it. This is my document. And actually bring it bring to the content serve. Uh, so that job is also done. Well. At content serve, there are many other ways uh, to export elements. On the one hand, uh, we've got the search front end, for instance, and this can also be called up standalone. And I've got my outdoor segment, and this is why I see it immediately. So uh, I can see my products published. I can select them and download them in various formats. At Content Surf, there are so called smart documents for export. Here with the bicycles, for instance, I can also see other facets available. Um, a beautiful search is enabled by this. Um, I could download data in a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheets or as uh, PDF files and what I get is a zip file then. And uh, I've got my products in there or as a, an Excel spreadsheet. Another format uh, uh, is what I would like to mention as well at this uh, juncture. This is the so-called cloud shares. And I've created one called Outdoor Specials. And they allow me to integrate or embed items. Um, get ready for adventure. This is static text. And uh, the image is already linked. Uh, and I want to use these because they have already been uploaded. Maybe I have other content such as a media library or some data sheets. Um, these are smart documents, the link to the web shop and so on and so forth. And this is uh, published with a link and this is the link here. Uh, whoever wants to can try the URL, enter it in your smartphone, bit.ly.3 uh, UFTWXV. Mm -hmm. And? Uh, shall I? Who, who wants to do it? Uh, who's already doing it? <laughs> okay, yeah. He's doing it, he's doing it, he's doing it. Okay. And then click on it. And this brings me to the published view of outdoor specials explore nature and style. And I have the content. This could be a micro website. Um, and this is online now. So this is the static content I wrote before. Then I have the images uh, uh, that uh, the suppliers gave me through the URL. They're included now. So this means uh, all of the images from the Excel spreadsheet are there. And there are also, of course, products. with the smart documents that we find here. We said we also do a web shop example.
This is a very uh, simple Magento demo shop. But you can see uh, this little partial structure that I showed before. The structure was handed over to Magento. I have the products in now and find uh, my various data needed. So this works with the SAWS, the uh, connector by content serve. So this is uh, really easy to deliver to the shop front end. But there's also the InDesign uh, file, the outer entity. This is a preview. The, I have not created a PDF because this would be high resolution. This is unfortunately low resolution because we uh, can only uh, transfer the embedded previews from InDesign. But it's all already there. Then I've got the contents of marketing portal and I probably have other content that um, I want to use for my publication. Here's a link with Pinterest, for instance, or my Instagram story that I've uploaded as well. Maybe I have a, uh, uh, this is uh, the REST service. Uh, so in the area of syndication, there are many possibilities to access this data again, including even a YouTube video. Okay, so um, in summary, we can say, Within 30 minutes, um, departing from an Excel spreadsheet that looked like this, we have imported the data, mapped the data, even uh, created texts, translated them, uh, got them through the workflow, and published them in InDesign on a web uh, um, uh, store page. This is really quick, um, considering what we had as an input. And with such tools as Deepool or ChatGPT or ContentServe, this is possible. Okay, then. Um, question. Questions. Question without a mic. Yes, says the speaker. This also works. Uh, on the first question, um, for example, let's look at another product that we had before. This product here, for instance. Um, I probably have existing metadata for this one. And I have an existing description text, but I delete it uh, for that matter. Enter a new attribute and then do a workflow activity. And in the workflow, there are various integrations. There are also lectures here on Netresco or by Semantics, or, but also uh, on OpenAI. And through this workflow, this is rendered. So this is such a workflow activity. And it has come up with this text now. It can be configured. There is open AI text here. This is a little form of American characters, 1500 HTML markup, intonation series. And this is uh, how you can apply this for existing products. Comment of the mic. Yes, exactly. What was the second question? Um, this is... The essential part I showed is the onboarding portal. And this is uh, available for all supported content serve uh, functionalities. This is the business solutions that we can actually integrate in existing licenses. Yes. Generated text, um, you smartly used it as the next step, if I have images for landing pages, for instance, image uh, um, views, can these be generated with uh, the integration of Midjourney? Yes, we could try this out. Uh, I don't know how good they, they will be. They're, they're getting better all the time. Yes. 
this would be cool. The possibilities when you think um, uh, five years ahead of now, they are improving by the month. Uh, we saw this was ChatGBT in November. I, I didn't understand in February. I actually uh, saw it in my Xing newsletter because every headline uh, covered it. Then um, ChatGBT um, was really widely talked about. And you can see where we're headed. Yes, and they're, they're very fast. Yes, we're very fast indeed. And um, th that you can actually work with partners on this one. Yes, uh, th this is referred to as time to market. You have to be faster than your competitor. <laughs> and this is why it's uh, going so fast. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, please. What about AI generated text? Uh, they are uh, rated uh, worse uh, by search engines. I don't know. I just heard that uh, search engines rate texts worse that they actually rate as duplicated content. What is worse? Um, do I have a uh, text um, written with loving attention to detail by my editor for 500 euros and I have duplicated it on various websites or do I have uh, for three send an AI generated text uh, that is not duplicated. I don't think um, that uh, the Google is uh, capable of identifying this. It's a race. It, it's a race. The the AI texts are better and the recognition get, is getting better. It's a race that's going on row. Yeah, uh, some translations, human translations, are, are worse than in chat uh, GPT. Especially with product texts. Um, uh, chat GPT has, has the weakness that the associations uh, are missing, the hallucination by Chat GPT. This is nerve wracking indeed. I wrote, um, uh, say, tell me everything about Alexander World, and you get stories uh, that are in part wrong. But uh, at, uh, at other times, it is uh, really fascinating to see how meaningful the texts are with very little I input. You have to weigh matters. Uh, when I generate something with the uh, chat GPT, then I have to really check it unless I have 10,000 products where the text is perfect. Uh, and when, when the text is not so perfect, it, it doesn't, doesn't uh, uh, interest me because 5,000 of these, these products are never seen by customers. But if I want to have a perfect text and I create it in a fully automated way, then I would to go to I a semantics and a Tresco. But then I have to pre-write the texts and then I can actually put them, have them put together by, by algorithms, but I always have to produce a cartridge, which is also some work to do. Uh, uh, I have compared Deeple with ChatGPT, and I find that the Deeple translations are cleaner and better still. Uh, in the uh, English original, for instance, um, a sailor who week spent weeks um, uh, and... Uh, in the AI, which can also translate, uh, set auf See verloren, whereas Diepel set auf See verschollen. And verschollen is the technical term to, uh, for being or getting lost. I think Diepel is it's still better there. But this is uh, as of today, uh, uh, 2023, in a year's time, or in five years' time, uh, this may be completely different. You have to be really fast and use the things and leverage them while you still can. Well then, any other questions? Well then, I'd say 12.20 on time. Thanks very much for listening.